Let's catch up with the duel between the number one and number two players in the world. Fabiano Caruana playing with White against Magnus Carlsen in round seven of Norway Chess. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon.com. So if you remember in uh, the first half of the tournament, Magnus Carlsen defeated Fabiano Caruana. So could Caruana gain revenge? Let's take a look. So, so far, we're following the course of many of their games from the World Championship match in 2018. And Caruana playing bishop b5. This is such a nice opening for white. This was always one of my favourite ways to play. And here, bishop takes c6 uh, was tested in their World Championship match. Castles was also played once. And here, if you recall, Caruana played rook e1 and then e5 and then b4. Quite a sharp game, but Carlsen had it under control. But in this game, Caruana played pawn to c3. Now this is the way that I always used to play way back and it used to be in the 19 well 70s and 1980s really the main line of this bishop b5. And here the main move which was always thought to be satisfactory for black is knight f6. And then white can push on with e5 or Rook e1 was the move that I always favoured. And recently, let me just uh, digress a little bit. Recently, this move, bishop e3, has come into fashion. Caruana, for example, defeated Dubov in the Tata Steel tournament in January, uh, last January, with this move, bishop e3. Um, so this is starting to test black's position again. But after c3, instead of knight f6, the main move, Carlsen played e5, played it very quickly. This is a really risky move. If black plays knight e7 and castles, then his position is absolutely fine. But this move is the real test. White sacrifices a pawn and gets a superb initiative. My results with this move are fantastic. I think I've won every single game I've played with d4. It is so dangerous. As black, you need to be absolutely switched on. If you make one false move, then you're gone. In fact, I would never recommend playing like this with, with e5 as black. It's it. I think unless you really understand this, it can go badly wrong, as we're going to see in this game. Well, Caruana had this exact position in the Isle of Man tournament about a year ago. <laughs> yeah, it is a year ago almost exactly. Against Fedosev, and he crushed Fedosev. Fedosev played knight e7. The bishop just lodged itself on d6. And basically, Fedosev never got out of this bind. It is really difficult. But Carlsen was obviously prepared for this and played the pawn to a6. Puts the question to the bishop. It can go to c4, but Caruana played bishop a4. Knight e7. Of course, black would very much like to prevent that bishop coming in, but pawn to d6 simply allows uh, that to be captured. Hang on a second. That's better. Yeah, simply allows that pawn to be captured um, because of the pin here. So let's go back. So that's the idea, bishop d6. So knight e7, and now bishop d6. And black has to shake free of this bind, otherwise it, it can prove fatal very quickly. Uh, for example... Um, game that Michael Adams played in England number one went castles knight d2 where we've almost transposed back to the Fedosev game actually it is really hard to shake white's bind here um, 
once that pawn comes to e5 and that knight can potentially come into e4, it is so dangerous. But Carlsen was prepared. He played b5 and quickly played bishop b7. Rook e1. Now, if black castles, then we have a similar kind of position after knight d2. Um, really hard to shake out of this because if you step out of this pin, then f7 is vulnerable. That's the problem. So Carlsen played knight c8. It's the best move. But I repeat, black has to play precisely here to get out of difficulties. And e5, supporting the bishop. Knight takes bishop, otherwise the king is stuck. Pawn takes knight, check from the rook. And king f8. So already the king has been displaced. Split rooks. That's a problem for black. And with that pawn on d6, that really cuts black's position in two. Let's see, you know what you're doing here. Black can be lost very quickly. Now, it's white's move. Previously, we've had a game that, that went knight d2. But after f5, black was actually doing okay. The pawn on f5 covers the e4 square, preventing knight e4. And black can crawl out with bishop f6 and king g7. But here, Caruana played a new move, pawn to h4. And this is very dangerous. First point is that... White can sometimes play simply knight g5 to attack the f7 square. So black needs to do something about that. Well, what about f5? Um, I mean, it doesn't address the knight g5 problem, um, but it does cover e4. And, well, if black has time to play bishop f6, it's fine. There's, let me show you a remarkable move here. Knight c3. This is incredible. Now, if that knight comes to d5 and one of these squares, that is just gone. And if that's taken, then queen d5 threatens mate, queen f7. And if queen f6, knight g5, two mates threatened here, queen g8 and knight h7 mate, or bishop h6, knight h7 and after rook takes, then queen g8 is mate. So you can see how quickly black comes unstuck here. So h4, what did Carlson play? Well, he thought for about eight and a half minutes here and came up with bishop f6. Looks natural to cover the g5 square and give the king a square on g7, stepping off the back rank. Now knight d2, now you can see the difference that black cannot prevent the knight coming into e4 here. f5 simply isn't possible. King g7, after half, almost half an hour's thought, 27 minutes 59, the clock says. Um, and that's an indication that Carlson felt extremely uncomfortable here. Bishop d5. So a nice semi-pin here. And, well, here's an interesting variation. Uh, Caruana played knight a5. If bishop takes h4, then rook e4. Here's a nice variation. My computer suggests here rook f4. What a funny maneuver. Really interesting. Just with the idea of putting pressure on f6 and ultimately f7 as well. Very unpleasant. So Carlson played knight a5, exchanging off the bishops, but that does leave that knight in a slightly funny position. If you remember in Carlson's game against Duda in the previous round, Duda ended up with a horribly placed knight on b7. Well, it's the same here. The boot is on the other foot, and Caruana is wearing the boot today. So that knight covers d6 and also covers the c5 square, leaving that knight pretty sickly on b7. Once again, that pawn is immune. Let's just have a quick look at that. Bishop takes, and now queen d4 check proves fatal. 
for all kinds of reasons. But let's say g3, the queen is uh, removed from h4 and then f6 crumbles. So rook e8, very sensible, bringing the rook into play. Uh, but that cost Carlsen 15 and a half minutes. Incredible pressure on the world champion. Caruana was playing his moves very quickly. And, well, soon Caruana has, had developed a, a, a massive time advantage, about an hour ahead on the clock for the world number two. And he's playing well. Pawn to h5. Okay, now we see... Another idea behind advancing that h-pawn, it wasn't just to cover the g5 square, but the h-pawn's advance creates considerable difficulties for black, as we'll see in a second. A rook exchange, and that queen comes to a very good diagonal, covering h6, but also perhaps looking to get in on f4. And black always has that dilemma. Is white going to push forward with h6, pushing the king back? And that could be really nasty later on, creating a kind of mating threat, mating net, and mating threats. So what does black play? It's always a dilemma. Do you take that? But that, of course, exposes the king. Well, Carlson played h6, well, physically preventing the white pawn's advance, but after this exchange, we can see that black's king is also not particularly secure. So basically what white has done is exchange that h-pawn for this f-pawn, and that means that black's king is potentially exposed along the seventh rank and also along this diagonal. Just, just wait. So queen d2, Caruana starts to mop up the pawn on d4. He's playing well. d3, so Carlson wants to potentially get that pawn. b4, nice move. Covering the c5 square, so that knight looking really not the best. Those two squares covered. Rook e6. So Carlson trying to remove that pawn on d6 and also covering the bishop. Queen takes d3. So now material is level again. And Carlson is fighting back. So he's putting more pressure on d6, rook d1. But it's still very unpleasant for black. Look at the two kings. Black's king not very comfortably placed. White's king, totally secure. That's the massive difference between the two positions. Queen c6, attacking the knight. So Caruana exchanged on f6. Well, that does knock out one of the defenders. And you can see, again, that king is looking a little bit drafty. Knight e5. And here, good move from Caruana. More pressure on Carlsen. So he's starting to get really short of time now. Uh, there are lots of tricks here. For example, well, here's a simple one. If queen takes d6, queen e2, the queen is attacked, and then the rook will crash through on d7. But it's not fun having that knight right in your face. The queen attacked, drops back to c8, and here's a crunch moment. Caramana thought for 17 minutes here. Before playing queen d5, a straightforward move, moving forward, he could have considered queen b1. That's a tricky move. So ideas maybe to play rook c1. And the queen can still switch here to b2. If, well, rook takes is impossible here because, whoops, I've overshot with my arrow. If rook takes, then we exchange and g6 hangs. If knight d6, knight g4, and then queen b2 check. And the king is in all kinds of trouble. 
Queen c3 seems to hold, but this is still quite tricky. White can go into this endgame, and white is still better there. Again, a better king, safer king than black has. So queen b1 was a real test, but queen d5 was also a real test for Carlson. Um, rook takes d6, then queen f7. Whoops, I've misfired with my arrow again. Then queen f7 wins. So rook e6 blocks the queen out. Knight g4. And now queen d4 check threatened. So the king stepped to the side. Queen d4 threatening a big check. Queen f8 covers. And now the queen came in on a7. Still really tricky if knight d6, then queen d7, and the queen also looking at the a6 pawn. But rook d6 saves Carlsen. This just about works. The tactics work. If rook takes rook, then queen takes is the best move. And then the queen actually picks up that knight on g4. So after rook takes d6, rook e1, knight d8, black still isn't completely out of the woods. Knight e5, this is still looks really threatening. But queen e7 is a good move, pinning. Knight f3, attacking the queen. And Carlson put the rook in the way, and then rook d1 threatens d7. The rook came across to defend, rook e1, and the play is repeated. Well, Carlsen, short of time and having been under massive pressure, uh, was obviously very happy with the draw. Caruana, now a pawn down, couldn't see how to make further progress. So a draw seems like a, a reasonable result here. Well... Uh, I think a really interesting game. Uh, Kramnik, I, I dropped in on the, the commentary with Judith Polgar and Vladimir Kramnik. And Kramnik said halfway through this game, if Carlsen survives this, I will applaud him. And, well, absolutely, I think Carlsen came through by the skin of his teeth under massive pressure. Caruana caught him. That move h4, obviously underestimated by Carlsen or not really investigated in his preparation. I'm sure this would have been prepared by Carlsen and his team, possibly even during the World Championship match in 2018. But H4 introduces um, new ideas, a lot of very interesting ideas for White. So, a high-class game from both players. Draw seems like a correct result. After this, of course, because it was a draw, they played an Armageddon game and Carlsen managed to win that one on time. It was also another close game. So Firuzja won his Armageddon game against uh, Aronian. So Firuzja still leads the tournament with three rounds to go. It's going to be very interesting.